Um, so I will be doing the introduction. Um, so thank you all for joining us. Um, once we get going, we will have you guys all muted, um, but feel free during the presentation to pop your questions into the chat box. And um, at the end, there's gonna be lots of time for question and answer. So, um, but yeah, so any of that, and then we will open up the board for any guys to ask any questions at the end. Um, and then as long as you guys keep yourself on mute, that's great. Um, and then if you do wanna ask a question at the end, we'll just have to have you unmute yourself. So with that being said, let's get started. I'm gonna give you guys a little um, introduction about our, um, of our guest speaker today. We have Jacqueline Turvey, who is respiratory therapist here in Kamloops, BC. She is a certified respiratory tobacco educator with 28 years of experience. So she knows her stuff. She is currently working in the primary care respiratory as a, uh, the primary care respiratory therapist in Kamloops, and she loves her work um, that allows her to be part of improving people's quality of life by helping them with their breathing issues. So, without further ado, I uh, will pass it over to Jacqueline. She'll be doing our talk on managing stress and anxiety. Hi, everyone. Thanks so much for for logging in today. Um, I'm just going to take a, the opportunity here to share my screen. Okay, can you guys see that okay? Okay, I'm going to... Um, it seems like technology is an issue these days. I think so, hey? We were having some issues yesterday at pulmonary rehab as well. So let's try again. All right, I think we've got it. So can you see the slide all right, Alexa? Okay, awesome. So I can yeah, only I can... see a few of you. Um, but please, if you have any questions, just as Alexa said, just pop them into the chat and we can go over them. I see a lot of my colleagues online as well. So if it's not something I can answer, then maybe they can jump in as well. So our talk today on stress and anxiety and how to manage that. Again, um, my name is Jacqueline Turvey. I'm a respiratory therapist in Kamloops, a certified respiratory educator and a certified tobacco educator. I've been working for many, many years, <laughs> 28, and 22 of those years have been spent in community work. And I have a passion for teaching Fine education and self-management. I live in Kamloops with my husband, my teenage boys, and my dog, Millie. So our topics or agenda in focus today are, is going to be dealing with stress and anxiety, impacts of that on the body, identifying triggers, relaxation techniques, managing breathlessness, and some really great resources, which we can share out. Hey, Alexa, awesome. So our first, um, our first slide is dealing with stress and anxiety. So these words are often used interchangeably. There's an overlap in terms of our response to stress and anxiety, but the causes are usually different. Stress focuses mainly on external pressures, which we find hard to cope with. We usually know what we're stressed out about, um, and the symptoms of stress typically disappear after the situation is over. Anxiety isn't always as easy to figure out. Anxiety focuses on worries or fears about things that could threaten us, as well as the anxiety about the anxiety itself. So let's talk about some impacts on the body. Oh, what's happening? Okay, everybody responds differently. So we can see my little friends up there on my left, and hopefully your left too, is Mr. Fight. So his response is going to be to fight. He's wanting attack. The words below him are hard to re read, but it says rage. He may feel rage. He may feel anger or irritability. Our middle fellow is flight. So his response to stress and anxiety is to run. He feels panic. He may feel fear or anxiety. And our last little guy here with his toque on is freeze. And he wants to hide. He feels like he wants to shut down. He wants to detach or he feels stuck. And I want you to think about animals in nature, maybe a deer or a rabbit. If they feel they can defend themselves, they might fight. 
or they may flee, or they may freeze and blend in with the environment, depending on what's going on. Stress is now referred to as a tiger chasing you. And in fact, back in our caveman days, it could have been a tiger chasing you. But nowadays, the tiger for each of us can be different in terms of what each person's stressor is. How does stress and anxiety affect your body? Now, the slide may be difficult to read for some of you, so I'll go through under each area of the body. So for the brain, it's possible the per oops, sorry. It's possible the person has difficulty concentrating, may feel anxiety, depression, irritability, mood changes, mind fog, or even sleep issues. Cardiovascular system may have high blood pressure, increased risk of stroke or heart attack, increased cholesterol. Joints and muscles are also affected. Increased inflammation throughout the body, tension, aches and pains, muscle tightness. The immune system is affected. And we don't always think about this area. So decreased immune function, lower immune defenses, increased risk of becoming ill, or even increased recovery time. And our skin, hair loss for some, dull, brittle hair can affect your nails, make your skin dry, acne, or even delayed tissue repair. And what about our gut? Well, it can actually affect nutrient, nutrient absorption, it can cause diarrhea, constipation, indigestion, bloating, pain and discomfort. I know that's one of my effects. When I start to get anxious, I can feel my stomach tightening. Okay. And the reproductive system, another area that lots of people don't think about, can decrease your hormone production, decrease libido, and increase PMS symptoms. So let's talk about identifying triggers. Now there's three different areas that I'm gonna talk about, environment, physical, and mental. So each person is unique and you may experience similar or different symptoms in your friends or others. The following list contains some examples of things that could cause stress. And I'll probably give examples of a couple of them. So environment, well, weather for sure. I have lots of clients that we talk about. So some of them are Stressing as we go into winter, you know, they'll say to me, you know, Jacqueline, the cold weather really affects me a lot. And I feel anxious about that. Or the hot summers we have in Kamloops, um, you know, the hot weather really bothers them as well. So they're starting to think about that in springtime and thinking, worrying about how am I going to manage that? Smoky air. And that's been a concern for a number of years now, at least since 2017 and a few years before that. So people thinking, well, okay, what am I gonna do when the air gets smoky? Stuffy rooms, I have people that tell me, you know, I can't stand to be in a room that's tight or packed um, with no airflow. Crowds are an issue. Family demands and conflicts can cause anxiety and stress. Workload for some and driving. And I'm sure some of you down at the coast can attest to that. And I would say the same about Kamloops and rush hour. So physical symptoms can cause shortness of breath. And some of you may be feeling that with your stress and anxiety. May feel pain, indigestion, some fatigue, weakness, persistent cough can cause stress. Those are triggers. Mental, and so frustration when you're getting angry. Grief or loss can be a trigger. Worry, guilt, anger, fear, feeling a lack of control. Now I've put this slide in because I want people to remember each person's trigger for stress is unique to them. We're all individuals and need to recognize our own triggers of stress. This is so that we can manage the causes and reduce the effects to ourselves. Do you know what your triggers are? And how do you know they are your triggers? Do you have an action plan to manage your triggers when they arise? We talk about COPD action plans when we have COPD, but we can create action plans for other things as well. So having a plan in place. What does it feel like to you? We all experience some stress in our lives. Short-term stress can be good and it can be bad, but let's give you one uh, situation where it's good. I have a car racing towards me and I jump out of the way. Well, that's good. That's good stress reaction. Um, but long-term stress can wear you down, including your ability to adapt and cope. And stress can build up in your body if you don't unwind completely. If it's intense, sorry, intense and ongoing, 
And if you've not had time to wind down, eventually your body wears down and you can re reach that stress threshold response much faster. And let's not forget, some people are better at dealing with stress than others. It's just a fact of life. And I think the main point on this slide is just to realize stress is normal. We all experience it, but it's how we react that we wanna talk about today. So what are some relaxation techniques? The next slide has a great list and I'm gonna go into a bit of detail on each of them. Okay. We spoke about the stress response. So let's talk about the calm response or the parasympathetic response in the body. And that's the relaxation pathway in our body. So how can we achieve that? So one way is breath focus or deep breathing. This helps you concentrate on slow deep breathing and aids you in disengaging from distracting thoughts and sensations. So when you're focusing on your breathing, you're not thinking about something else. You can access that relaxation pathway in your body that way. Body scan. Now, some people may have heard of this and others may not have. So a body scan is basically paying attention to different parts of your body and bodily sensations in that area and gradually and in sequence going some, say from your, your feet all the way up to your head or the other way. And you may have heard it as, okay, now we're gonna focus on our toes. Everybody concentrate on your toes. Think about how your toes feel, relax your toes. Once your toes are relaxed, let's go to your calves, okay? Now think about your calves, relax your calves. And so you're going through your body parts that way, relaxing. Guided imagery. So that's the use of words and music to evoke a positive imaginary scenario, okay? So if I was to talk you through that guided imagery, I might start by saying, okay, imagine that you're on a path going on a hike. And as you're going through the hike, you can see the sun glistening through the leaves on the tree. Beside you is a small little creek and you can hear it burbling as you're walking along. There's a slight breeze in the air and you feel it gently going across your skin. So I'm bringing you on a trip and so that's guided imagery. Mindfulness, meditation, it's purposely bringing your attention to the present, the moment, not thinking about what happened in the past or what's going to happen in the future. It's just focusing on the here and now. Yoga, Tai Chi, and Qigong. And yoga integrates physical, mental, and spiritual components to improve physical and mental health, especially stress-related illnesses. Qigong is similar to Tai Chi and consists of a series of health practices with body movement and meditation to attain deep focus in a relaxed state. Repetitive phrase or prayer. Repetition can significantly reduce symptoms of stress and anxiety and improve quality of life and spiritual well-being if that's something that you practice. Visualization is the formation of a mental image of something to achieve a more relaxed state of mind. So I took you on that guided imagery. Now do that for yourself. So you're going to sit there. For me, I like to I like to go to an alpine meadow in the spring where there's flowers and butterflies. And so closing my eyes and imagining that I'm there and all the different things that I would see smell and hear. Positive thinking. Is your glass half empty or half full? So positive self-talk, humor in that one. And for some people, listening to music is very helpful. Some people like classical music, others like different types, and they use it to help themselves relax. And practicing relaxation for even a few minutes a day can be extremely helpful for managing stress and anxiety. So let's talk about managing breathlessness. I'm just gonna put this up for a minute so you can all have a good look at it. We've, many of you have probably seen it before. So this is something that we focus on a lot in our work that we do as respiratory therapists with our clients with COPD, the anxiety breathlessness cycle. So with COPD, oftentimes comes shortness of breath. And for some folks, they feel a lot of anxiety or a panic attack around that, which increases the shortness of breath and anxiety, which for some will reduce their activity. And then they'll have fatigue, which in the end creates more shortness of breath. And then there we are in that cycle. 
it's really important to have an awareness of how to manage your breathing when you have COPD. If you don't, it can be easy to get into this difficult cycle of increased shortness of breath, which will increase your anxiety and so on and so on. And you can activate your calm response with your breathing. And we talked about that already. Understanding your reaction. What's the most important stressful situation that you're dealing with these days? Does it make you anxious? How does your body react when you're anxious? What do you do? Can you think of other actions that would help you cope with the situation in the future? I wanna tell you a little story about the client that I have. Fabulous, fabulous lady. So for her, grocery shopping, something she loved. But as her COPD progressed and her shortness of breath worsened, it caused her a lot of stress to think about grocery shopping. And so right away, she would think, I need to grocery shop and then feel anxiety and it would stress her. So as we work together, we talked about, okay, well, what can you do? How can we make this better for you? Because it's something that you enjoy. So I asked her, what if you broke it down into steps? And she said, okay, that's fine. I said, what would you do? Well, first I would have my husband drop me off at the front of the grocery store. Perfect. Okay, that's number one. What's next? Well, I know that there's a bench inside the door. I could stop and have a little break there. Great. Step number two. And after that, well, I know the carts are right there so I could get my cart after I had a little rest. Great. That's step number three. Once she had her cart, it was going to be much easier for her because she could use that for support for her arms. And then she felt a lot safer. And so then we were able to break it down into other steps. But that those first three steps were her big stressor we figured out. And so she was able to use that. And that was her action plan for going to the grocery store. What are strategies to break the cycle? Well, Recognize and understand your feelings. Try not to worry about future events if you can. Plan your actions in advance, just like my client did. Do things that you enjoy. So if you don't have a lot of energy in your day, try and save it for some of the things you really enjoy and bring you joy, because that's going to help manage your stress and anxiety as well. Try to solve one problem at a time and let yourself make mistakes. Talking about trying to solve one problem at a time, I had someone once tell me when I was in it, trying to plan this big event and I was stressing about it. And they said, you know what? You can eat an elephant if you take one bite at a time, take one foot in front of the other. So you know what? Try and solve one problem at a time instead of letting all the things in your head kind of get in a, a big tangle and that can make things more stressful. Try and maintain a positive attitude if you can and use humor. I know that that's something that I really enjoy. And, you know, when we have a chance to laugh together, it, it's really helpful for all of us. And don't forget to ask for help from your friends, from your family, from your healthcare provider, if you can. There's other resources as well, and we'll get into that later on in my talk. Okay, helpful versus unhelpful habits. Unhelpful breathing habits will make you feel more out of breath. So when you're out of breath, you may feel like you need more air. You may start to take in more air. You're going to breathe faster. And you may not take the time to fully empty your lungs as you breathe out. As we know with COPD, sometimes if we don't give ourselves enough time to breathe out, we get some air trapping. And that air gets trapped. And so then it makes us more short of breath. And breathing like this is more work. You'll get more tired. You'll get tired more quickly and feel even more out of breath. But the good news is there's techniques you can use to breathe more efficiently and to feel in control of your breathing. And I'm sure you all have all heard of some of them. If you practice the techniques and use them every day, they'll help you when you're active or if you suddenly feel short of breath. Yay, personal breathing. I'm sure you've all heard of this. It is fantastic. And so I'm just gonna go through the steps just in case there's somebody that hasn't heard of them before. So we're gonna breathe in through our nose. 
smell the flowers, as my colleague Tracy says, or the roses. You're going to pucker your lips and you're going to breathe out very slowly through pursed lips for twice as long at least to exhale. Good, and you're going to repeat. Now, what this actually does is when you create your lips in that form, it creates a back pressure that's felt in your lungs. And with COPD, sometimes those airways can get a little floppy. So that back pressure holds those airways open and it allows that trapped air to come on out. Don't forget, the other benefit is when you control your breathing, you're actually accessing that relaxation pathway in your body. So not only are you helping your breathing, you're helping your stress and anxiety by accessing that pathway. What are the benefits? Well, helps relieve shortness of breath. Kind of talked about it there. Bring focus on breaths. Again, if there's a lot of noise in your head, right? And you're thinking about a lot of different things. You can focus on that. You can focus on the here and the now and the breath and not those other things. Slows your breathing and each breath is more effective and promotes relaxation. What are benefits that you experience if they're different than what I've shared here today? It'd be helpful if you put them in the chat for others to see. Another breathing technique is diaphragmatic breath breathing technique. The diaphragm is a large muscle that sits under the lungs, kind of like this under our lungs. And it's the most effective muscle, muscle we use to breathe. When someone has COPD, this muscle can become weaker. So a diaphragmatic breathing technique is laying down, but I, I don't know if I'd lay flat on my back like that. I might recline in my chair or I might recline on the couch or in bed with a few pillows. I might put my hand on my abdomen gently and on my chest. And I'm, my intention is to feel my abdomen expand. So I'm gonna breathe in through my nose, feel my abdomen expand, and then I'm going to exhale through pursed lips, using my tummy muscles if I can, gently exhale twice as long at least. Breathe in again through my nose, Exhale through pursed lips, okay? So what are the benefits of, oh, sorry, I forgot to mention something else. We have had some clients report they can't feel their abdomen expanding. So we say, just keep your hand there and focus and think about it expanding. And I appreciate any feedback. If there's anybody, any other of my colleagues that would mention um, maybe some comments they would use for their own clients on that. So what are some benefits? Well, we can strengthen the diaphragm muscle, which helps us with our breathing and help relieve shortness of breath, decreases the effort required to breathe, promotes relaxation, and can aid in mucus removal as well when we're doing those nice deep breaths. If you do a little bit of a pause, so you're breathing in, and you do a bit of a pause, two to three seconds, and then exhale, you can access some of those lower airways and start bringing that mucus up as well. It takes practice. Breathing deeply with a slow, steady rate signals our parasympathetic or relaxation system to calm the body down. Long, deep breaths can also manage yeah. our stress response to help decrease anxiety, fear, racing thoughts, a rapid heartbeat, and shallow chest breathing. These responses can directly impact our physical, mental, and emotional health and longevity. Positions that can help. What positions help you recover your breathing? Perhaps you've found body positions that help you recover from breathlessness. Helpful positions vary depending on whether you have an obstructive or restrictive lung condition. You can use these positions to help you practice your breathing control or recover your breath when you get breathless. We have different positions here. There's a fellow here. He's sitting in a chair, feet flat on the ground, um, chin in his, uh, just re leaning on his hands there with his chin. And then another fellow, same thing, in a chair, leaning over a desk, using it for support with a pillow. And then again, leaning on a table either head down or with arms 
prop there, or if there wasn't anything to lean on, someone holding their thighs there and using that to prop on. Another position that I've had clients tell me is helpful is if there's a wall, they lean against the wall as well. That can be support and help. And then a comment that was made by a colleague yesterday, which I really appreciated was, and that was Tracy and Kamloops, thank you, Tracy, was that even having a purse or a bag, if you kind of use that to lean on as well, can give you some support. I want to remind you that these positions aren't just for people that have lung problems. If you think about it, and you think about professional athletes that you've seen after a race or a really hard game, you'll see them use similar positions. So really, you're all athletes. And again, please put any positions that we haven't talked about in here that you think might be helpful for others. Self-care. TLC is really important. Regular exercise is important. So if you have the opportunity to attend pulmonary rehab, it's fantastic. Um, the BC Lung Foundation online classes are a great resource as well. This will help you manage your stress and anxiety. Eating well is very important. And for some CBD clients, small, more frequent meals, meals are more helpful. Managing shortness of breath around eating. Enough sleep. If you feel like your sleep is a problem, then contact your primary care provider and ask for an assessment and maybe some help around that. Social supports are really important. So our online group, the Facebook page for BC Lung Foundation, um, BC Lung COPD Asthma Community is fantastic. Senior centers in your area if you're able. Community classes, so a lot of times um, community um, programming will come out. There's a booklet in a lot of communities you can join. Or hobbies. Find somebody who has similar hobbies to get together. Positive thinking. So gratitude around things that we can be grateful for. Laughing. Um, savor experiences that are enjoyable. Seek out things that bring you pleasure. And random act of kindness. Random acts of kindness for others bring joy to ourselves as well. So in summary, stress is a natural part of our lives and can cause anxiety. Lung disease is difficult, sorry, lung disease and difficulty breathing can cause increased anxiety. You can't eliminate all of your stress, but you can choose how you react. Practice the strategies presented today whenever you feel stressed or anxious. Here's some resources and I've passed them on to Alexa and Lindsay to share with you. I'll post so here right to help. In the chat. Perfect. Here to help is um, an online. It's a project, our program of seven leading mental health and substance use nonprofit agencies. Bounce Back is a free program designed to help adults and youth manage low mood, mild, moderate depression, anxiety, stress, or worry. You can access online, and actually, you can get access to an online or sorry, a phone coach as well. Bounce Back. Living Well with COPD, which we always want to promote. Um, it's a free self-management education program that you can access as well. You just sign up for it. Another resource is Self-Management Program BC for those with chronic disease to learn techniques to better manage your health. You can set goals and problem solve, communicate more effectively with your family and friends and healthcare team, deal with stress and difficult emotions, helps you take action and live a healthier life. Um, family members and friends are welcome to attend as well. Okay. And um, that access will show you communities that run the program. The other thing I wanted to point out and share with you as well is this webinar. Now the webinar was for the Pulmonary Fibros Fibrosis Foundation, but I had an opportunity to listen to it and I found it extremely helpful. And I, I wanna share it with others because uh, Dr. Elizabeth Saxton talks about living beyond your diagnosis. And she talks about it in a general way. And I, I, was, I had some takeaways for myself and I knew that my clients would as well. So she is um, a clinical psychologist and she champions psychological health to be valued just like physical health would be. So my final slide is take a deep breath. 
inhale peace and exhale happiness. And I had someone tell me, you mean with pursed lips? Exhale happiness with pursed lips? And I said, sure, with pursed lips. So that's the end of my talk. Thank you very much. <laughs>